let's do this intro old school late night TV commercial style. Do you wanna do your very own John boat wiring but you're not sure where to start? Are you scared of electrocuting yourself, possibly setting the boat on fire and maybe even sinking it to the bottom of the lake? Are you frustrated trying to figure out which wire goes where and how to connect all this stuff and make it work in your John boat? Don't you worry, cause I've got just the product for you. Introducing Send It John Boat's complete wiring guide video series for dummies, idiots and people of adult age that still eat crayons. All you need to do is grab one or a combination of any of the following items that you use for coping with your anger, regret, and a long list of bad life decisions. Plop your little happy chocolate starfish down on a couch and watch this video. Now while we can't guarantee that you'll be a pro boat wire after watching this video, I can promise that you will get to see me wire this boat you may laugh a little, and if I get shocked, at least it'll be on video for you guys to enjoy. Maybe. Send it. Disclaimer for the haters, trolls, and everyone who pushed pause on their Pokemon game so that they could take a break and temporarily become a professional boat builder, because we all know there is nothing worse than boat wiring videos for bringing out haters, trolls, and comments. So with that being said, if you go and read the comments of this video, everything I'm gonna do is wrong. But what those haters in the comments don't know is that I've watched four entire YouTube videos about how to wire a boat, so I'm basically certified to do what I'm fixing to tell you how to do. So with that being said, this is my boat and I'm wiring it the way that I want to. If you wanna see it, stick around. And if you don't like it, you can go to the other side of the internet. I'm sure somebody right now is making a video of someone shooting ping pong balls out of their butthole. And as interesting as that sounds, we have got to go wire this boat. Let's show you how to do it. Let's run through everything I'm going to be using to build this electrical system for this boat and all of the links to the products that I am using are going to be down in the description box below. You can get them either through tinyboatnation.net. If you want to use a promo code, I'll leave it right over here. You get 5% off on all your orders at tvnation.net. Starting off with our battery disconnect. This is just a basic one off, one on battery disconnect. I am going to be running two batteries on this boat, but I'm going to have them both hooked together for my 12 volt system. So we only need one battery disconnect next up is going to be the fuse for the trolling motor this is a 60 amp and it's got a little push button reset on it if you need to do that and then we've got our power distribution block that is also a fuse panel built in and i've only got six circuits that i'm going to be running on this boat the electrical system is pretty simple so this one has six areas to put six different circuits and six different fuses and we've got our switch panel. This one features six gang switches that all light up and they come with little stickers so you can put on there what exactly each switch does. It's got a voltmeter so that you can keep an eye on how much voltage your battery's got. This is a regular like 12 volt cigarette outlet right here. And then this one over here is for double USBs. So what all are we going to be powering on this boat? First up, we've got our trolling motor. It is already mounted on the boat, but here is the plug that is going to be used to plug and unplug the trolling motor power. We've got dual 800 gallon per hour bilge pumps. I've got some courtesy lighting that I'm going to be putting underneath the deck so we can see up underneath there and some along the runners on the floor so that you can see at night. We've got our anchor light for the rear of the boat and a plug for it to go into. And then out on the boat, I already have installed headlights that are like LED bars that are built into the front bumper. We'll look at those in a minute. And I also have the front navigation lights, which are LED strips kind of like this, and they are already mounted on the boat. And last, I haven't decided if I'm going to install these or not yet, but I have these like rope LED lights that you can mount up underneath the catwalks and they change all kind of different colors and make your boat look like it's a freaking nightclub. I don't know if I'm going to install these or not yet, but I have an extra circuit for it just in case I decide to do it. Far as wiring goes for the boat, for the main battery and the wiring that we're going to be used for the trolling motor, we're going to be using marine grade eight gauge wire. I've got it in red and black for positive and negative. And then everything else on the boat is going to be done with this 16-2 duplex anchor marine grade 16 gauge wire. I went ahead and bought a huge spool of it because I've got several boats to wire, but this is what everything else in the boat will be wired with. So a little bit about the wire itself. I get asked all the time, do I have to use marine grade wiring or can I just use, you know, automotive wire or whatever they sell at a Walmart, Home Depot, extension cords, all that kind of jazz. First, let me explain the difference between this marine grade wire and regular copper wire. I'll give you my opinion and then you can make an educated guess for yourself which one you should use. Regular copper wire like this that's used in automotive applications and the wiring in your house and extension cords and things like that are usually just multi strands of 
plain copper. Bare copper and copper alloys that are used in you know, regular wiring like this are not exactly water and moisture friendly. If you use regular old stranded copper wire like this, in your boat at some point in time it is going to come in contact with water probably sooner than later. And at some point that water is going to start to corrode this copper and then it is going to lose connection or cause you to have connection issues. So in the boat industry, a way to combat that is one, get rid of that wire and they've come up with their own wire. It's called marine grade wire. And each strand of copper wire inside of the marine grade wire is tin. The tin coating helps give it more resistance to water and moisture, humidity, things like that, and it helps keep it from corroding and having connection issues later on down the road. Another fun fact and kind of cool thing about marine grade wire is the strands themselves, the individual strands, are usually a lot thinner than in automotive grade wire or in household wire, and there's more of them which gives it more surface area and thus a better electricity flow. Also, because of the high strand count and the strands are thinner, it allows it to be a little bit more flexible than regular wire, which comes in pretty handy because there's some tight spaces on a boat that you've got to bend this wire. The big downfall to marine grade wire is it's expensive. Just doing a quick Amazon search here, a 100 foot spool of 16 gauge marine wire running about 19 bucks and searching for regular automotive grade, just copper stranded wire. I couldn't even find a single 16 gauge roll. They sell it in double rolls of one red and one black. And it was cheaper than buying just one roll of this marine grade wire. When it comes to marine wire, I usually always guesstimate that the wire is going to cost me about 25 to 50% more than the equivalent in regular stranded copper wire. So my opinion, can you use regular old cheap copper stranded wire to wire your boat? Yes. Should you? I wouldn't. At the end of the day, the decision is up to you, but there's so much expense that goes into boats. I can find other ways to cut costs and splurge a little bit on the wire and know that I don't have to worry about it for a really, really long time. So another question I get asked a lot about the wiring on boats is what size wire should you use? Well, the internet will come in handy because there is a handy dandy little chart you can find on Google that'll tell you exactly what you need to know. If you jump on the interwebs, go to Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you like to use, type in a wire gauge chart or marine grade wire chart. You can find a ton of these little charts right here that will tell you exactly what size wire you need. Aside from your handy dandy chart, you'll need to go through each piece of equipment that you're going to be powering up on your boat and figure out how many amps each individual thing runs. The other thing you'll need to know is how long of a distance that you've got to run that wire because that is what is on this chart. If you look on the chart up at the top from left to right, it reads length of conductor, which means length of wire that you're going to be running, and then down the side from top to bottom, it goes total current in amps on that circuit. So let's just take the LED courtesy lights that I'm going to be putting in this boat. All four of them together pull a half of an amp. Well, a half amp isn't even on this chart. The lowest we've got is five. So we go to the number five line right here for five amps, and I've got to run approximately 15 feet of wire. So we go over here to the 15 and meet in the middle, and it shows you that you can use 16 gauge wire for that circuit. Pretty easy, pretty handy little chart. Print it out and keep it around your shop or look it up before you build your boat and you'll know exactly what size wires you need to buy. Wire coloring doesn't really matter. It's completely up to you. I personally like red for positive or power and black for negative or ground. It's just my personal preference. I've always done it that way. You can use whatever colors you want. And in this video, you're going to hear me use several different terminologies for Red wire for me is going to be positive or power or hot wire. And for me, black, I say ground, negative, earth. People use a bunch of different terms, but they all kind of mean the same thing. For most of the connections on the boat, I'm going to be using this new kit that I've been using for a while now. I actually really like it. These are called solder seal connectors. So what you do is take your wires and you twist them together inside of here, slide this over, and then you use a heat gun to actually heat this up. And this is solder right here, and it actually melts and coats both of the wires to tie them together real quick. And then this has got some kind of crazy glue inside of it. And the glue actually melts to help hold the wires in place and then seals it up real nice and tight. I bought this recently to do some work on the electrical on my truck. And these things are like really, really handy. I'm actually really liking these. I also got some heat shrink in different sizes. I'll probably use it for a few connections. 
For the fuse panel and switch panel, I've got two bags of different size blue connectors. These are for 14 to 16 gauge wire. I've got ring terminals, and then this bag is male and female flat and spade connectors. And then I've also got some ring terminals with the uh, heat shrink already built into them, so those will come in handy for hooking up to the battery and our main disconnect. Starting with our switch panel, let's go ahead and do a couple of things to it. They come pre-wired, and this is basically for your average Joe that doesn't know anything about wiring. What they want you to do is tie all three of these red wires together, put that on your positive of your battery, take this black wire, put it on the negative, and if you want all the lights to work on the switches, you can hook up this blue wire too. We're not going to do that. So I've removed all of these power and fuse wires from all the little pigtails and daisy chains that were on there. We can get rid of those. We do not need them. We have our own fuse block, so we don't need any built-in fuses. All of this pigtailed wiring for the grounds, we can leave it in place. That will be just fine. And all of the blue wires are for the accessory lighting on this switch. Basically on this side, there is a green light that goes in this little line right here. We want those to light up at all times. And then when you turn the actual switch on, this little green light will come on. And then when you turn it off, this light will go off. But these will always be illuminated whenever there's power from the battery. These lights are totally optional. You do not have to run them. If you don't want to run them, all you need to do is just take all these blue connectors out and throw those away. So let me attempt to explain how this is going to be wired. It's fairly simple, but if you've never done wiring before, I can understand why this would be really confusing and a really daunting task. It's really not. In simplest terms, what you're going to do is you're going to take your two battery wires, your negative and your positive. You want to connect both of these to the battery with a ring terminal. And then the other other end of these what you're going to do is you're going to take your black ground wire and you're going to hook it to the negative post right here on your fuse block your positive post of the battery is going to go into one side of your battery disconnect so it'll come right there then you're going to cut another piece of wire and go from the other side of your battery disconnect out of the disconnect and over to the positive post on your fuse block. You're also going to want to take another power wire and hook it to the other side of your disconnect and run it over here to your trolling motor fuse. On the opposite side of your trolling motor fuse, you're going to put a wire here and that's going to run straight to your trolling motor. Your ground wire from your trolling motor is going to come and connect right here to your fuse block. Now, as far as wiring the rest of your accessories, you only have two things. Your fuse block goes first and then your switch panel. So let's use this build pump for example we're going to wire up power and ground to this bilge pump what we want to do is we want to take a power wire and run it from whichever circuit i want to be my bilge pump circuit the power wire is going to go from here to the bottom of this switch now depending on which switch panel you get one of these two is going to be the input and one's going to be the output so this is going to be power going in and then power going out to in our case the bilge pump so we'll run a power wire from the fuse to this lower one here and that's going to give power to the switch and then we're going to take our positive wire from our bilge pump and it's going to connect to that top one right there on the back of the switch now your ground wire from your bilge pump does not go to the switch panel it is actually going to go back straight to this fuse block right here and this fuse block has a ground bar right here for all of your grounds so you can connect each one of your grounds individually it will all go to here and this runs back to the battery i'm going to pop in here real quick and cover one more question that i get a lot lot about wiring boats and that is where do you ground the battery or are you supposed to run a ground wire to the hull anywhere and the answer is no 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 oh my god no everything that is powered by the battery in your boat needs to end at the ground post it needs to go no further than that you do not need to run a wire from the ground post or the the negative post on your battery to anywhere on your boat nowhere ever nothing you do not ground anything to the hull of your boat on an aluminum john boat if you do you're going to be running electricity through the hull of your boat make it conductive and start this really cool process called electrolysis for those of you who don't know electrolysis is a method for rust removal on steel and since aluminum is softer than steel and it doesn't rust it oxidizes it will literally eat itself away especially if you put your boat in any kind of brackish or salt water so yeah don't ground your boat don't ground your power system to your boat. Don't ground your battery to the hull. Don't nothing. Just everything's going to be powered by the battery and all that power is going to run right back to the battery. And I'll leave it at that. Doesn't matter if it's a 12 volt, 24 volt, 96 volt, 5,000 volt system. Do not ground anything to 
your bolt hole. Got it? All right, so our next step is to build us a panel to put this in the boat. Now, depending on your boat and how your build goes, this may look different for you. You, you may mount all of your fuses and your disconnect and stuff inside a hatch somewhere and have the switch panel you know to where you can get to it mine i'll show you where it's going to be in the boat here in just a second but i want to go over the basics of building this panel so the panel itself is just a sheet of aluminum i believe this is 0.050 it's not very thick but it's just enough to hold all of my stuff in place i laid everything out where i wanted it marked all of my screw holes pre-drilled a hole so that i could mount all this stuff in place you will have to cut out a big square here. I just used an angle grinder so that I could put my switch panel in. And now everything is screwed down to this aluminum panel. So I went ahead and started here on the workbench with what wiring I could get done so it'll minimize how much I have to do once I get this in the boat. So from the battery disconnect, I've got two power wires going out. I've got one that goes to one side of the fuse for the trolling motor and the other one goes right down here to the positive lug on our fuse panel. Now using a ring terminal just like this, I made wires to go from each side of the positive blocks on this fuse panel to run around to the back side to go to each one of these individual switches. So if you follow these wires around to the back side, we'll be able to see exactly what they're hooked up to. All of these wires right here, ignore this one for right now, I'll explain that one in a second, but all of these wires or what is going to the actual switches. I told you guys wrong earlier. Actually, I went back and looked at the wiring diagram. All the wires going from the fuse panel, so your input power to each switch needs to go on this middle one right here. And then this one is where you're actually gonna connect the accessories. I had them flip-flopped. Now what I've done up here is I have daisy chained all three of these lugs up top. These are the two power adapters. I think this one is for the cigarette outlet and this one is for the USB. And then the one in the middle is the voltmeter. So I went ahead and made me a little daisy chain to go from each one and then I ran one power wire out. Now if you trace that power wire back around to this side and I doubled it up on this lug right here. So it doesn't really matter which circuit this goes to. The reason I picked this one is this is for my LED navigation lights on the front. They don't pull hardly any power and this stuff up here doesn't hardly pull any power. So I just combine them and put them all on one circuit. And then back over here to the back, we left all of the black wires in place. And I'm still not sure if I really want to hook up this blue wire or not. I did look at it. I mean, it looks cool and all, but I just don't really see any reason to have those little bottom lights on the switches right here lit up all the time when the battery's on. This is gonna be inside of my hatch, so I'm not even gonna really be able to see this anyways, and I'm just really not worried about it right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it in place and just tuck it back over here so that it is out of the way for now. The only other thing that I've wired up on this panel is going to be the grounds. So all of these grounds were already daisy chained together and it already had a little wiring harness and it just kind of stopped right here. So what I did is I put a butt connector right here, put some heat shrink over it and ran it around to the front. And then I connected it to the ground bar right here. So that's everything I can do on the workbench for now. I need to take this out to the boat, install it, and then we'll continue on with the rest of the wiring. We'll quickly go over how I do connections and some tips to help you out to make sure that you're getting good solid connections. We're gonna go over the solder seal ones out on the boat here shortly. So let's focus on these crimp style connectors. If you have one of these tools that looks like this, Throw it away. Those things are garbage for making good crimp connections. You do not want to use them. Go and spend the 12 or 13 bucks or whatever it is and get you a nice set of crimpers or a pair of lineman's pliers or even better. The crimp on these tools right here has the correct shape that you need, which is round on one side and then a little hump on this side. And that will give you the correct crimp that you need to get a solid connection on this. That piece of garbage just has two of these little rounded sections and it almost always gives you problems. Not even worth it, just throw it away. Go get you a decent set of these crimpers. Another handy tool to have, not completely necessary, but they sell these at Harbor Freight. They're like seven or eight bucks. It's a little wire stripper tool. Totally worth it if you got to do a whole boat by yourself. You can do all of your wire stripping up here if you want, and I'll show you both ways. So we're working with 16 gauge marine wire, and all you do is go over here and up to 16. It's got 10, 12, 14, 16, and on up. Go to the number 16, clamp down just like this. I usually pull against with my thumb and that is stripped. To do it with this little tool, you just put it in the tool, it grabs it and pulls that off just like so. So before I go and actually make my connection, what I always like to do is take my wire and twist it. 
give it a nice good twist so that it's nice and solid just like that. So I go a little overboard. I like to put some heat shrink on no matter what kind of connectors I'm using. These are heat shrink connectors and you can heat this up and it'll shrink down and then I will put another piece of heat shrink over the top of it. I also like it because it makes it look a little nicer. So then you're going to take your handy dandy crimpers and right over here they have colors on them. You got red, blue, and yellow. The color of the dot on your crimper matches the color of your connector. This is blue for 16 gauge and blue for 16 gauge right here. Put your connector in your crimper just like so. Make sure it's kind of lined up and in the middle and give it a good squeeze. If crimped correctly, you should be able to yank on this and it should not come out. Then just heat shrink this. Use a heat gun, not a lighter, to shrink that heat shrink up. And here is why I say do not use a lighter. It puts black soot all over this thing and it usually is way too hot. Yep, that does not look good. Once it cools down enough, then you can take your heat shrink, slide it down. And I like to put mine almost to the end, just covering up all of the connector. And then using a heat gun, you can go ahead and heat this up. I'm gonna use a lighter just to show you. The lighter does work, but as you can see, it left black soot all over my wire right there, and I don't like the way that looks. Very unprofessional. And remember, you're getting YouTube certified here, so don't be doing unprofessional stuff like that. All right, let me give you a basic rundown on how to make connections. What I'm doing is hooking these two bilge pumps up, and I want both of them to run on the same circuit. So I've already cut my wires to length. I've got this one cut and this one cut. I've got the wire strip back about a thumb's width, and it's about an inch or so. This duplex wire is run all the way up to the front of the boat, and that goes to our switch and our fuse panel. What I like to do is take about five, six inches of wire, make a slight cut right down the middle, so that you can get that duplex wire out of the way. Make a quick little shallow cut all the way around. Now you only want to cut through the white outer sheeting. You do not want to cut through your wires. And then peel this back. Get that out of the way and that exposes your positive and your negative wire. Get your handy dandy wire strippers and strip about an inch on each side. Then I take a piece of heat shrink and slide it over each wire. And then our solder connections. Slide each one of those over your wire. I'm going to take both of my negative wires and hold them right next to each other. And then I'm going to hold my wire that goes up to the front of the boat right in front of it, just like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist all of these wires together. get them pretty tight and then they end up looking something like this then you'll take your solder connection and slide it over and then grab your heat gun and just start heating this up now I hold the heat right in the middle so that I can get the solder to melt first and then I'll worry about the edges last So as soon as you get done melting the solder and you get all this heat shrunk down, it's going to be kind of sticky to the touch. What you want to do is just give it a couple of minutes and let it cool off until it's no longer sticky. Then you can take your heat shrink and slide it over. Grab your heat gun and heat shrink that into place. Then we'll just do the exact same thing for the positive side. All right, for this positive side, I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing up close. that wrapped up nice and tight solder connection and pull it over and then heat it up kind of hard to see this on the video but you'll actually see the silver solder flow all around those wires once it's hot enough and then you can heat up the edges to get that glue to stick and the heat shrink to shrink up around it and we'll take our other heat shrink put it around 
and heat that up. And that connection is now good to go. So if you plan all this out really well, you can actually hide all of your wiring up inside of your framing. Uh, for me, I'm just running it on the top side of these two supports so it actually holds it up inside this framing and you won't be able to see it. If you need to, you could drill a little hole through here and stick a zip tie inside to hold your wires in place. There's a bunch of different methods you can use, but this is the one I like to just use the parts of the boat that I can and put the wires behind them and hide them up underneath the frame rails. So let's try to make some sense out of the spaghetti factory I've got going on over here. Everything is done and wired up. I've just got this panel clipped into place real quick so I can show you guys all the wiring and exactly what I did. This wire right here runs in from the battery and goes into one side of our disconnect. With the disconnect off, there's no power going to anything else in the boat. Once you turn the disconnect on, then everything is now powered. From the disconnect, we have two power lines coming out. We've got one going to the 60 amp fuse that runs out to our trolling motor wire. And this one right here runs into our main fuse panel. So from the fuse panel, all of these positive wires, they are bundled up into here. They go to the back side of this panel and they attach to each one of these switches. That is what feeds the power from the battery to each one of these switches. All of these wires on this negative bus bar go around to the back and they attach to the ground wire that goes to each individual accessory. One for the navigation lights, one for the anchor lights, bilge pump, so on and so forth. This main lug right here has two ground wires going to it. One of the ground wires runs back around and goes to the battery. The other one is the ground wire for the trolling motor. All right, so on the back side of our oodles of noodles, we've got those are all the red power wires that were coming from the fuse, and they are going to each one of these switches. Now, all of our power wires coming from our accessories, so those bilge and lights and everything, they're coming into this little section right here, and each one of those is going into the switch right there. All the rest of these ground wires run to each each individual circuit inside these duplexes and they're all labeled one goes to the bilge the front navigation lights rear light all the other stuff and all that stuff is right here so I designed this panel to be really easy to take in and out because I didn't know if I was ever going to add anything to this later or have to work on it for some reason later on down the road. So I've just got some aluminum angle riveted into the front of the boat here and I've also got some down here on the bottom and all I'm going to do is just clip this into place real quick with a couple of spring clamps and I'm going to use some stainless steel self-tapping screws to screw this into place. Now for the batteries, I know this is going to be really hard to see, but I'm running two of the Everstart Marine RV Deep Cycle 29 size batteries. They're Group 29 DC is what they call them. You get these from Walmart, they're like 89 bucks. They're stupid cheap and they work great. I've never had any issues with them before. So I've got my wires run underneath this rib and up into the middle. So the way I've got these wired is in parallel so that it stays 12 volt, but it doubles the amp hours. Each one of these batteries is 122 amp hours with two of them wired parallel gives me 244 which should be plenty enough for me to run my lights for a night if I want to run up and down the river and you know use my trolling motor for a day without any problems so over here is the positive connections I've got a wire running from one positive to the next positive and then the same thing over here with the grounds I got a ground running from there to this battery right over here. Now the wires coming in from the bottom, those that goes out to the fuse panel, like I was saying, and the positive cable is going over to that battery, and the negative from down there is going to this battery. That is how you keep it 12 volts and double your amp hours by running two batteries. Now I've still got to add in another fuse right here and I need to put in the onboard chargers. So there you go. Not super, super fancy and I try to keep everything nice and simple. There are a million different ways that you can wire these up and there's a bunch of different places you can mount them. I just want something simple and easy that's out of the way. I don't use the electronics a whole bunch on this boat like you would on a bass boat or whatever. Pretty much if I go out at night, 
I turn the lights on, I leave them on until I'm done with them, and then I turn them off. The purpose of building this boat is not to be pretty. It's not a bass boat. This is a functional boat. This is a boat that I'm going to bow fish out of, catfish out of, run on the round on the river, do some hunting, maybe some duck hunting. I don't know. I'm going to do a lot of different stuff with this boat, but bass fishing is not the purpose for this boat. So I'm not making it look extra fancy like all the fancy little bass boats that you see here on YouTube. Ascendant John Boats video would not be complete without some time in the haters corner. I've got my hater aid, so here we go go and yes my lsu barbecue grill kit was the only bottle opener i had handy don't judge me if you're not familiar with the haters corner what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comment section through the last couple of videos and because we know that people on the interwebs are super sensitive we don't use their real names we just call them scooter our first scooter commented over on my float pod video and he writes rough slow and inexpensive wins Good shit, ding dong. What in the world is it with people calling me ding dong? Like, I I don't get it. But Scooter, I sincerely hope that every time from now on when you go to the gas pump, you stick your debit card in there and it goes, see cashier. Uh. <clears throat> ding dong. Our next Scooter dropped a comment over on my video about when I welded up my trailer for my 16 foot boat. Scooter writes, did it wrong. Use another welder. Ugh. I love these comments. There's nothing that makes me happier than getting on the internet to check YouTube comments and seeing this someone telling me I'm doing it wrong. And Scooter, I hope that the next time you go camping, that you get f***ed in the ass by an angry moose. People like that is why I have to put a disclaimer in the beginning of every single one of my videos saying that I'm doing it my way and you don't like it, whatever. But they still feel the need to comment on something. It's not the first time this happened and it certainly won't be the last because and it will probably happen again on this next comment. Our next scooter left a comment on my uh, stainless steel prop test video. He writes, Gator Tail is a surface drive. They don't make long tails. It's Go Devil. Backwater and they're more expensive. BC, they're stronger and will last longer coming from someone who's Owen both I'd pick American Mud Motors any day. Well, give me 10 bucks and call me a hooker. Nailed it! <laughs> Gotta love everyone that just wants to tell me I'm wrong about everything. And Scooter, I get why you are so angry, but if you want to fight with somebody, don't fight with me. Start with fighting one of your English teachers from when you were in grade school. Whoever taught you how to write like that needs to be punched in the nose. Our next Scooter commented over on my boat framing video. He writes, that's awesome, but I would have built it the right way. <laughs> Scooter, I hope that every time you go to the sink to rinse off a spoon, the water hits the spoon and splashes right back on your shirt. Oh my. No, no, so even worse than that, Scooter. I hope that every time you forget your password and it sends you a code to an email so that you can unlock your password, that code goes to an email that you can't remember the password for. Ooh! Our next scooter also commented on the same video, and if you guys have watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to sometimes say, hey guys, this is easy, it's not rocket surgery. Well, once again, I'm wrong. Scooter wanted to let me know about it. Scooter writes, it is rocket science, not surgery. Well, Scooter, lasagna is basically spaghetti cake, and if I want to call it spaghetti cake, I can. You can call it lasagna. Our next scooter commented over on the same video. Scooter writes, L. I had questions, so I typed back, R. It's just like my mama always says. What the hell is wrong with you? Our next scooter commented over on my LED light bar video. He writes, instructions unclear, got pee pee stuck in ceiling fan. You know, scooter, an erection is not considered personal growth but I have a lot of questions. Comments like this remind me of a song. It goes like, Every day I'm a getting closer Taking a bath with a f***ing toaster. How is that even possible? I, I could see it getting stuck in a lot of things, but a ceiling fan? Really? Our honorable mention for this one goes to Scooter, who wrote on the LED light bar, he writes, I love your content. Hello from Mississippi. Hell, I put a light bar on a minivan. 
Scooter, if you can get a light bar to come out of your butt, you probably also own a creme brulee flavored dildo covered in glitter. <laughs> but but calm down, train wreck. This is not your station. <laughs> you, you put a light on my... Who puts light bars on a minivan? I have so many. That does sound kind of awesome. I'm going to go buy an Astro van and put like 25 light bars on the front of it. Y'all crack me up. Don't forget about those links down in the description box below if you want to buy any of the stuff that you saw me use in today's video. Those are affiliate links and they'll give me like 12 cents so that I can go buy some more Haterade for the next video. And if you want to help support the channel, we've got hats and t-shirts. Link is down in the description box as well. Before we sign off, let us take a moment and always remember, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye guys.